Okay, I'm here on the Needham's Point Peninsula and for many years this peninsula has offered Barbadians the benefit of two beaches and of course access to this prestigious and lovely luxury hotel behind us, the Hilton Barbados Resort. That resort has now been sold. It has been sold by the government of Barbados for 80 million United States dollars or 160 million Barbados dollars. What you need to understand is that at present, this Hilton Resort has a book value of in excess of 250 million Barbados dollars. Within the last 12 months, substantial renovation was done on this property. A loan of over 11 million dollars was, was taken out and repairs and retrofitting were done so that at a minimum, this hotel probably carries a valuation of over 260 million Barbados dollars. And yet, for some inexplicable reason, government has chosen to sell it for 18 million US or 160 million Barbados dollars. And the question that we have to ask of the government of Barbados is why? What sense does it make in these straitened and difficult circumstances to sell this prime piece of real estate, part of the patrimony of Barbados, for such a tremendous shortfall in terms of its real value. The question also has to be asked is whether there was ever a recent valuation done on this hotel prior to its sale. All available information suggests to me that the last valuation done on the Barbados Hilton was about three years ago, long before any discussion in the public domain certainly of a sale of this entity was taking place. There are parts of this agreement for sale that actually cause you to wonder in whose interest is the government of Barbados functioning and working. One part of the agreement, for example, indicates that the new owner, a company or an entity that is known as L and R, whatever that stands for, if L and R is able to raise $15 million in after sales profits, over the course of the next 12 months, then LNR is going to pay to the government of Barbados 10 times the amount of whatever it makes, over $15 million in after sales profit. Of course, unless the lunatics are running the asylum, it becomes very clear for anybody to understand that there would have to be an incentive for the new owner to work so hard as to earn $15 million over the course of the next year or so so that they would then be in a position to pay the government 10 times the amount over $15 million that they have in fact earned. The question that you must ask therefore is whether there's any sort of incentive built into this agreement to make these new owners work so hard as to earn in excess of $15 million in after sales profit. The answer unfortunately is that there's absolutely no such incentive. And historically, you need to know that this hotel has only made $15 million in profit on two occasions since its existence. So it is therefore not likely at all that the government of Barbados will see any part of this sweetheart deal that is put into writing but in all likelihood will mean absolutely nothing for us the citizens. So again the whole arrangement becomes absolutely laughable and some serious questions now have to be asked of government as to in whose interest was this agreement really crafted. Was it not in fact true, for example, that this is not really about the sale of the Barbados Hilton in circumstances which will see future generations of Barbadians still receiving or seeing the benefits of the patrimony of this land? The reality is that what comes across to me very clearly, and I suspect comes across to you as well, is that this agreement is really about pawn shop peddling. The government is desperate for foreign exchange. And the question therefore has to be asked, what is the extent of that penalty? In real terms, therefore, the government of Barbados may not actually see the $30 million that they are expecting to receive from this sale, but may actually see $20 million or so, which really translates into a week or two of foreign exchange import earnings. And I ask the question to you as right-thinking and sensible Barbadians. If you wanted to raise $20 million in foreign exchange, would it not have made far more sense? And would it not have been far more prudent 
to have gone to the international lending agencies, raised the money by way of a mortgage, and say simply that you're prepared to assign the profits, the operational profits of this wonderful hotel behind us. And that those profits for a period of 10 to 15 years or a percentage of those profits would go to pay back the loan and therefore you would get your 20 or 30 million dollars without having to part with the fee simple absolute in possession which represents the patrimony of this country. That is how the average Barbadian functions whenever they run into financial difficulties in his or her own home. You go to the credit union, you, you ask for a loan, and you say that you want to be able to consolidate other debts and you pay back over a period of time. You don't sell a house worth two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars in an effort to raise thirty or forty thousand dollars. But unfortunately that is the absolutely ludicrous route that has been taken by this government. I want to ask a few questions of the government in these circumstances because I think that it is time now that we drop anchor and the government starts to become accountable in this process. The first question is this, is it not true, and the Minister of Tourism and the Minister of Finance must speak to this, is it not in fact true that the technical advice of the Ministry of Finance was that this sale was a non-starter, that it was absolutely ludicrous, and did government not, in spite of that clear warning and clear caution extended by the technocrats in the Ministry of Finance, decide to forge ahead with this ludicrous proposition of selling the Hilton for 80 million United States dollars. The second question that I want to ask is this, is the national insurance of Barbados not a creditor of Needham's Point International? Do they not have outstanding loan, um, loans due to the national insurance? And in addition to that, is the national insurance not also a bondholder having extended over $17 million in securities to this entity. And, and beyond that, is the national insurance not also a minority shareholder in Needham's Point Limited? And if that is the case, then when was national insurance notified of this sale? And is it not correct to say that it was only within recent weeks that the national insurance of Barbados was brought up to speed on the galloping exercise that is taking, pl taking place where an agreement to sell the Hilton for $80 million was made without reference at all to this minority shareholder in the process. And without reference, of course, to the interests of the public of Barbados represented by the national insurance. It is with something of a heavy heart that I have to say that this is the second exercise in the space of a couple of weeks where a government that said to the people of Barbados that it was not interested in privatization and divestment of its assets has forged ahead without reference to the people of Barbados, without giving us details on what it is doing behind closed doors and doing in our name, and then bungled the operation. The first of all was the National Terminal Companies Limited, and now we have this disgraceful scandal here at the Barbados Hilton. And again, the question has to be asked, in whose interest is the government functioning? I think that many of you have also asked another type of question. I have heard you ask, what would the Barbados Labour Party do differently? There comes a time when I suspect any government in the world has to look at the assets that it has and it presides over and make tough decisions about those assets. But that is not where this exercise went horribly wrong. Where this exercise went wrong is in the lie, the damnable lie that was fed to the country that this government would never, under any circumstances, be prepared to go into a program of divestment. Where we went horribly wrong is that when we started out on this course, we did so under cover of darkness. And, and to this day, the people of Barbados have not been brought up to speed and included in what was intended for the National Terminal Company Limited or what has been included and planned for the Barbados Hilton. So that we are being, we are being treated as strangers in our own home. I give you the assurance that one of the things that the Barbados Labour Party will do differently is that immediately upon give, being given the opportunity to assume the reins of government again, we're going to put in place a college of negotiators. People who have the necessary experience, expertise, skill and practical know-how. Who don't just come to deal with matters on a whim and a fancy, but do so against a professional training and an understanding on these things. 
We have done this when we had to deal with the International Law of the Sea arbitration with Trinidad. We brought in technical advice so as to help shape government's policy and government's direction in the name of the people. We've done this when we've had to deal with the World Trade Organization and other international trading entities. We've brought in the very best that we could find with the type of experience and expertise so that we could shape government's um, direction on behalf of the people. And that should also have been done here. You can't hold a fireside sale of one of Barbados's most prestigious pieces of real estate and then expect that the country will accept that having sold it off, there is nothing to show for it. That is absolutely scandalous and disgraceful and should never have been allowed to have happened in a modern democracy.